What Tales He Knows by John L. French from the Society for the Preservation of C.J. Henderson. Don't walk by. Come. Hear the stories. Welcome all to the big, fat, wonderful world of me. Connor turned toward the noise. On a makeshift stage, he saw a large man in modified jester's garb enticing people to gather round with promises of songs and stories. Told in song for the price, of course. He's been at that all day, the smith complained. Every half hour, the same rant. It's getting so if he should suddenly go mute. May the saints will it so. I could step in and say it for him. But is he any good? Are his tales worth the telling? Who can say? Once the crowd is large enough and there's money in his bowl, his voice drops so that only those who paid can hear him. Now about that hide you hold in your hand. I can fashion you a nice scabbard from that in no time at... But the knight was not listening, his attention now on the storyteller. Thank you, he told the smith absently. I'll think about it and be back. I've heard that before. Small group had gathered around the stage, mostly children whose parents had left them while they shopped or sold. The bowl in front of the storyteller was mostly empty, the few coins in it either brass or debased copper. The minstrel sighed. Oh. For this I could tell a short tale of pirates or dragons. Pirates and dragons, suggested a young lad in the crowd. Oh, would that I could, young sir, but the length of the story depends on the coins in the bowl. And for what I see before me, I could only... He looked out, appealing to what few adults were standing behind the children. No help was forthcoming. But unable to disappoint an audience, no matter its size or age, the storyteller sighed and said, Perhaps I could tell the tale of Jack and her beanstalk. The moans and groans and cries of not again, and we've heard that one. And indeed they had, for it had been told twice before and mostly to the same crowd of children. Connor could wait no longer. Hold up, Sir Bard, he called and walked up to the stage. Drawing a gold coin from his purse, he dropped it in the bowl. Your finest tale, if you would, one of sword, sorcery, and daring deeds. A lengthy tale one suitable for these fine young people. Smiling in delight at the coin that shone in the bowl, the storyteller winked and said, Many thanks, Sir Knight. What is your name so I can sing your praises at a later time and perhaps add you to a tale or two? I am Connor of Tomb, and you do me honor by accepting my coin. In my country, bards are revered, and it is considered a duty and privilege to support them. We are well met, Sir Connor. I am called C.J., son of Hender, and if what is you say is true, then when this fair is over, I may travel with you, if you will have me. Let us talk of that another time, Sir Bard. For now you have young people waiting for a great tale. Uh, about that, Sir Connor. While the tale I am about to tell is complete in itself, it would be even better with song. For another coin... Laughing, Connor added silver to the gold, then sat with the children to enjoy the tale of Princess Eliza and the Dragon Lord. He even made sure to include a fruit few pirates. And in no time at all, C.J. had his audience singing, laughing, and crying along. The noise of enjoyment from the small crowd drew a larger one, then one larger still. Within two turns of the glass, it seemed that half the fair was gathered around C.J.'s stage, where he talked, sang, told jokes, and danced like a monkey whenever a small coin was added to the now overflowing bowl.